Welcome to a summer public witness. Today's theme is how does our faith guide us in addressing the uncertainty confronted by vulnerable DACA recipients, part two. Today, we are very happy to partner with St. Paul's Episcopal Church, who is hosting today's prayer. I am very happy to introduce Deacon Laura Siriani, who will be leading today's event. Deacon Laura serves as a deacon at St. Paul's Episcopal Church, where she has launched ministries that focus on areas of social justice, food and security, refugee relocation, and immigration support. We thank you all for participating today. Thank you, Maria Elena. It is a pleasure to be here. I am so grateful to the Sisters of St. Joseph and the Justice Center for inviting us to participate in your summer public witness series that is focusing on disparity in our world. And I am delighted to uh, be share a space here today with these four young people who um, are persistent, articulate, compassionate, and passionate. And it is my privilege to introduce them. Uh, so if you'll wave and let me know, everyone know who you are or smile or something. Um, David James uh, will lead our examine he is, was born in Lima, Peru, and grew up in Santa Ana. He holds a master's, just recently holds a master's in theology from uh, Fuller Theological Seminary and is working towards his seminary degree, Master's of Divinity. David is a faith-based organizer with clergy and uh, laity united for economic justice and his specific area of uh, leadership is around immigrant justice work in our area. And there's David. And Nancy Frausto is Associate Rector at St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Long Beach. She has a compelling story to share and I will let her do that. But I want to add that she is a well-known in-demand speaker and preacher. And in 2014, she was recognized as one of the future 50 interfaith leaders in Los Angeles. Thank you, Nancy, for being here. Edwin Vasquez will lead our prayers. Edwin was born and raised until he was 15 in Mexico. He holds a Bachelor of Arts and Master's in Psychology from Humboldt State University. And his PhD research has focused on human family development, particularly immigrant families. Thank you, Edwin. And finally, Ana Ramirez will share the ways that we can act on what we learned today. She is a graduate of UCLA and in 2017 received her master's in public policy from UC Riverside. Anna is a DACA recipient. She serves as a community organizer for Resilience uh, Orange County and her focus is on advocacy and uh, support of immigrant detainees and their families. Thank you, Anna, for being here. And we will um, continue with our prayers, our examine, David. Thank you. And good morning to everyone or wherever you may be following us. We're going to have the an examine on migration, and it is adapted from the Ignatian Solidarity Network. We give thanks to God for the creation stories of all global citizens. We are affirmed by God's unconditional love 
of who we are as dreamers, migrants, refugees, citizens, and seekers of citizenship, even in the face of separation of families, border militarization, cruel detention practices, and policies that lead people to make choices out of desperation. What is my migration story? How have I crossed boundaries and borders in my own life? Is there someone who puts a face on migration for me? In the spirit of gratitude, reflect on the gifts that immigrants and refugees bring to our communities. We pray that we will be moved to action by the stories we hear and the people we know. We invite God's healing presence into our discernment. When was a time I saw someone as an other instead of seeing them as a neighbor or friend? God of compassion and mercy, teach us to reach across all borders to honor your people who wander the world seeking hope and safety. We pray in the name of Jesus, who shows us the way to you. Amen. Hello, everyone. Thank you for your presence and for the many actions you have taken as you advocate for justice. I am the Reverend Nancy Fresto. I serve as an Associate Rector at St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Long Beach, California. I am undocumented, and most of my life in the U.S., I was forced to live in the shadows. I am one in the 700,000 plus DACA recipients, and my story is one in the approximately 12 million undocumented people in this country. I've been asked many times to share my story. And one of the things that I've learned as I share my story that I want to ask of you before I start is that whenever you hear the story of any undocumented person, whenever you hear the story of any oppressed community, open your heart to receive a sacred story filled with vulnerability. Each one of us who steps up to talk about our stories, to talk about the importance for justice for the undocumented community puts themselves at risk. So I share my story, knowing that I'm not only putting myself at risk, I'm putting my family at risk. You see, my brother is also a DACA recipient. And though my sister was born in the United States and she is a citizen, she has lived with the trauma that comes from being part of an undocumented family. I put my parents at risk. So I ask you, open your hearts and open your minds. This is not a divisive conversation. This is a time for me to share my story, which is very similar to the many stories out there in our community. I came to the United States when I was seven years old. And most people would tell you that they, they crossed in a car, they can remember, I unfortunately remember every detail of that night when we were told we were gonna only run for an hour in the dark. And it was more like eight to nine hours of running and hiding. It's funny that I think back and the shadows that I've been kept on living in this country 
actually that night, it was the shadows that were my friends because the shadows protected me from the immigration agent, agents, from La Migra, from their lights. It was strangers on that night that were the face of God who reminded me and my family to keep on running and not give up. Many people don't understand why someone would leave their home country, why someone would risk their lives and the lives of their children. And I've heard so many ridiculous things. And let, let me be clear, let me be clear here. My parents and the parents of every other person and every single undocumented person that has crossed into the United States has done so because they are trying to survive. They are trying to provide a future for their children. You know, us DACA recipients, us young people, they call us dreamers. But the original dreamers were our parents. They dared, they dared to dream of a future where their children would not go hungry. Where they could be in a place where maybe somebody would not get killed every single day. They dared to dream of their children having an education a career. My parents made an extremely difficult decision. They left everything they knew. They left their family. They left their parents to provide my brother and I with an opportunity of something better. They are the dreamers. They are the ones that I thank every single night, every single day. Because of their sacrifice, I am able to be here with you today to share my story. My parents are my everything. When we came into this country, you know, people, people tend to believe that undocumented immigrants come into this country and, and right away they are allowed to, to be benefic beneficiaries of all these uh, programs. And the truth is that if you do not have the documents, you really can't get much help. So after crossing the border, after the hours and hours of running and hiding, of being in fear, as a child, I came into this country where I did not know the language, where everything was foreign, where I was not welcome, where my family was not welcome, and we lived in poverty. We were homeless. When we talk about hunger, I know <laughs> hunger. So much that the trauma of being hungry day in, day out caused me as a young adult to hide food under my bed whenever I had it. Because I was afraid the next day I wouldn't have any food. I'm sharing this very personal story because I want you to understand the many faces you see and you hear talking about being undocumented. It's not easy. It takes so much strength to survive and get past the trauma. But I was lucky. You see, I was lucky because I found a church that saw something in me. When I wanted to give up, when I found out that I was undocumented and the many years I spent working so hard in high school, trying to get into a good college, the many, many, many nights of not sleeping and studying, were a waste when I found out I couldn't go to all the universities I was accepted because I had no financial aid. There was no possibility for me to get financial aid. Now, I'm one of the older dreamers. So even before um, we were able to pay in-school to, in school tuition in California, I had to pay ridiculous amounts of money for one credit at a community college. I might as well have been going to UCLA for the amount that I was paying for that one credit. But see, my church, the people in my church held me up and they built a scholarship program and they helped me continue with my education. When I heard a call to ordain ministry, they helped me go to seminary. When my diocese was not sure if they could ordain me since I had no papers, my church petitioned and advocated 
and reminded everyone that you don't need papers to get baptized. Therefore, you do not need papers to get ordained. And thank, thank God, thank God for the people that advocated for me. Because now I am able to be an ordained priest. I've been ordained now seven years. And now I can advocate for others and I can use my platform to advocate for our community, for our people, nuestro pueblo. Because, you know, DACA, DACA seemed to have been saved. The Supreme Court ruled in our favor, but we knew, oh, we knew. We knew that it wasn't the end, that something was coming. And it did. And we'll talk a little bit more about what happened just a couple of days. Because I want to finish saying something important. I said earlier that our parents come and undocumented people come into this country for survival. Can you imagine being so scared to leave everything behind and throw the dice? It's about survival. Every undocumented person in this country just wants to have a better life and survive. Every DACA recipient wants to be able to be a professional, follow their dreams. You know, recently, recently I heard a, a dreamer say, we're not just dreamers, we're achievers because we achieve. And that has stuck with me because one thing I have seen in our community is that we work and we do not give up. We do not give up because we owe it to our parents. We owe it to our ancestors. We owe it to the people that have given up everything for us. But surviving has become more and more difficult. How do we survive when the political system uses us as pawns and gives us the only option of selling out our parents for a green card? How do we survive with our hope intact when everything we have worked so hard for can so easily be taken away? How do we survive knowing that for a portion of this country, we are not fully human? We are disposable. It takes so much. And the trauma of trying to survive passes down from generation to generation. And this is why it's so important. It's an important issue of, for people of faith. For those who believe in the power of God's love and have vowed to fight for the dignity of every human being, we need you. We need people to stand at our side, to fight for our right to stay in this country, our country. We have adopted this country as our own. For most of us, it's the only country we know. So we need you to use your privilege as citizens and to think about the lives of not just the DACA recipients, but all the press communities being beaten down every day, dehumanized and being thrown away as worthless. We need you to think and use your privilege as citizens and vote. Vote like our lives are on the ballot because they are. We need people of faith to advocate because their faith, your faith, mandates that the love of God and the love of neighbor should be greater than any other power. We need you, you and your communities to see the faces and hear the stories of DACA recipients, to know our hopes and our dreams, to see our humanity and our worth, to see our accomplish accomplishments and fight alongside us. We cannot be afraid to call out evil and to stand for the gospel truth that all people are made in the image of God and therefore worthy of dignity and respect. For everyone here today, and for those who will watch this recorder later, recording later on, you have such a power in your hands to provide hope for the millions of people who are being, being tor torn down this very moment. You have the power, the power to stand alongside us, not as saviors, because we already got a savior, 
but you have the power to stand alongside us and say you are not alone. That night, when I crossed the border, my mom was holding my hand and carrying my younger brother. And no matter how hard she ran, she was falling behind the group. There was a moment when all you could see was darkness. We were lost in the middle of nowhere. From the darkness, under a small bush, small tree, I know now as an adult that there was someone hiding under there, taking cover. But that man said to my mother, no se dé por vencida, siga corriendo, don't give up, keep on running. And I know in my heart that that was the voice of God. That was the voice that keeps me going when it gets so hard and I want to give up because because the political system has dehumanized me so much, dehumanized me and my community. Pero sigo corriendo y no me doy por vencida. I keep on running and I don't give up. But we need you to be a voice, a voice hiding under a tree, a voice hiding under a bush, a voice in the darkness to remind all of us to keep on running and not give up because there has been yet another attack on dreamers. On Tuesday, the memo came out saying, sure, you could apply, but now there's going to be even more hoops to jump over, and we can deny you whenever we want, and no new person can apply for DACA. I have 14 and 15-year-old undocumented youth in my communities who have been waiting desperately to apply for DACA and now can't because of the capricious system that keeps on beating down the immigrant community. I am passionate about this because this is about saving lives. And I'm looking at all of you to stand with us and fight with us. And I pray to God, I pray to God that you do. We need you to run with us and not give up. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. In silence and peace, I bid your prayerful intention for this gathering. In silence and peace, may we we bound together in loving purpose and purposeful action. In silence and peace, I bid your prayerful intention for the dreamers. May God continue to open the way for them, guard and protect them, and sustain those who continue the legal battle to ensure their place among us. In silence and peace, I bid your prayerful intention for refugees around the world. May they be sheltered fed and welcomed. In silence and peace, I bid your prayerful intention for people on both sides of the Southern border. We pray for those in shelters awaiting asylum hearings. We pray for those who have been deported. We pray for those in detention centers. In silence and peace, 
I bid your prayerful intention for government employees and private detention workers. May God's spirit provoke their consciences. May God help them stand against violence and mistreatment of God in their custody. Help them to imagine solutions for the many challenges they face. In silence and peace, I bid your prayerful intention for the nonprofit agencies, religious groups, and individual volunteers who are working to bring physical care and legal relief to people caught in a confusing system with shifting policies. Grant them continued strength and courage. We pray for the nameless and the unknown people who have died as refugees. We remember those who have died on their journey to the border. May grace, mercy, and peace surround them. In silence and peace, I bid your prayerful intention for all gathered here and all who join us in spirit. May, be, may we be renewed here to take up the word of loving our neighbors. Sustain and strengthen all of us today, Holy One. Help us reach and all to find the places where our voices, presence, and action can contribute to justice and love. We pray because of Jesus, who knows, who shows us the way. Amen. Thank you, Edwin. Um, I appreciate everyone that's joined um, us today to, to listen to what we have to say. Um, I'm Ana Ramirez. I will go ahead and share a little bit of, of different opportunities for folks to get involved um, and how you can do something in your community. So first and foremost, I think that there, it's very important to stay connected to your community by finding different justice centers and your regions and your areas to learn about how to best support people in your community. I also want to urge you to seek other opportunities to get involved in your region, <clears throat> specifically with direct actions, right? As we think about immigration detention, there are immigration detention centers all over the US. The US. And so I urge you to look through your region and identify if there are any detention centers and how you can get connected to support the advocacy of local groups. Follow up on direct actions, follow up all these organizations that are doing amazing work. Stay connected to your region. Secondly, I also wanna urge you to educate yourself as much as possible. I think that by joining today, you're taking that step, right? Of learning about people's stories, of learning and growing. And so I urge you to continue to do that. Educate yourself as much as possible. I do wanna highlight some of the, um, the work that is happening in Orange County locally. Uh, we have the Orange County Rapid Response Network where we have uh, hosted a series of trainings that started early in July. Um, and OCRRN, so that you can also further educate yourself around how is it that immigrant people whether they are in the US or they're coming to the border, whatever the situation might be, how you can assist them. So continue to do that. Um, and that's just the resource that you can definitely access. Third, I also want you to really listen to the directly impacted. I appreciate so much Nancy for, for sharing their story. And I think that, that as they said, right, there are many other stories of other people um, that really highlight the complexities of immigration and the immigration justice system here, right, in the U.S. So listen to the directly impacted, listen to the fact that I think that outside of the folks that are able to get um, DACA and are beneficiaries of that program, there is a large portion of other folks who do not have access to that type of policy um, and the ramifications that come with it. 
I also want you to think about how many people are criminalized, young folks, you know, parents, friends, family members that get criminalized by the immigration justice system and the criminal justice system in this country. So I urge you to listen to them because they have the answers as to what they wanna see in their community. Listen to the directly impacted. And lastly, I also want to urge you to support the directly impacted. If you ever come across any GoFundMe campaign, any sort of effort on social media to support uh, and provide mutual aid, please, if, if you have, um, you know, if you are able to provide monetary support or just uplift that link, that GoFundMe page by sharing it on social media, it goes very far. We can do a lot and reach a lot of people by just uplifting people's stories and uplifting how to support individuals. I also want to say that um, if you are able to, please, please, if you can, find out if there are any local bond funds in your region, because oftentimes these bond funds are the ones that are being um, able to, to release people from immigrant detention centers. So if you are able to get connected, donate, you're changing and doing something. So get connected, seek out opportunities and, and just stay involved. Um, do not tune, turn to the other side and, and ignore what is happening, but thank you. So I think it's my turn to finish us with the prayer, right, Deacon Laura? Okay. So um, I am completely just blown away by what uh, we've heard this morning, the prayers, and I, I hope it was valuable to you. Uh, as it was mentioned, this is very holy and sacred. And uh, yeah, I want to finish reading uh, this uh, few verses from Romans as a as a is a finishing prayer and um yeah let me read this and then we'll finish praying it's romans 12 says therefore i urge you brothers and sisters in view of god's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to god this is your true and proper worship do not conform to the patterns of this racist systemic world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, God's good and pleasing and perfect will. I want to emphasize living sacrifice. I also don't want to romanticize that. I want all of you to seriously consider putting your bodies at risk. We know that this country and the administration is getting heightened more and more as election season comes and more and more. And what do we ask from you as ambassadors of God? To give up your bodies as a living sacrifice. Take that as you will. Do what you must. Do justice and walk humbly with our God. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day, for the message, for the conviction, and for the spirit that is stirring in us something powerful. May the call that you have pressed upon our hearts lead us into action, and may that action be ever pleasing in your sight. And we pray, Lord, that the revolutionary love that we know can finally be here in heaven here on earth as it is in heaven may your kingdom come and may our bodies be ready to sacrifice in the nombre del padre el hijo y del espíritu santo amen
Thank you, friends, for being with us uh, for this absolutely powerful half hour. I, um, I hope that you will take this with you, share it with your friends, share these stories and the memory of these people that have bravely joined us today. And now I invite you to go in peace, to love and serve God's people. Amen.